Why, Agent Wilmore? Why, Agent Cook? You picked a great day to be late. There's some big gun in from D.C. I don't know what's up, but it looks serious. Yeah, he's probably here to make sure we're not stealing paper clips. Wilmore. Agent Wilmore, I want to see you in my office. Come in. This is Assistant Director Skinner. Agent Wilmore. Sir. Two of my agents are missing, Fox Muller and Dana Scully. I haven't heard from them in three days. I'm extremely concerned. Are they romantically involved? I don't know. I don't think so. Where were they last seen? In my office in D.C., right before they left. What case were they working on? I'm not quite sure. All I have is this travel requisition which shows that they were going to Everett, Washington. These two agents were able to function with a high degree of autonomy due to the nature of the cases they pursued. Can I get their cell phone numbers? Uh, you'll find it in the dossier, however, they're not answering. Have they disappeared before? No, not like this. Have they been romantically involved in the past? As I say, I don't know. I don't believe so. Should Cook be involved in this investigation? Well, it's up to you, really. You know the Bureau's policy on backup? I would suggest you use all available resources. Do you know of anything unusual in Everett? There's nothing that I'm aware of. What should I do with my current cases? Hand them off to Cook. I know he's busy, but this is priority. File an APB on Mulder and Scully, then give your current case files to Cook. A.D. Skinner will join you shortly. So, okay. What's happening? You can't just sit on this. You gotta tell me what's happening. A couple of agents have disappeared. A pair out of D.C., Mulder and Scully, male and female. They've been gone for three days.
You've got mail. Hey, partner, how's it going? What case is you working on? Um, pull tab counterfeiters and uh, the militia group still active in the Northern Cascades. And an assist to the DEA on a meth lab ring, but I'm um, handling things okay. Shanks wants me to hand my cases off to you. Great. Thanks, golden boy. I suggest we start with the motel where Mulder and Scully are staying. I'll be waiting for you in the car. Can I help you? We're looking for information on two FBI agents who checked in here. Mm-hmm. And their names would be? Agents Mulder and Scully. Oh, yeah. They paid for a week in advance, room three and four. Did you notice anything unusual about the two agents? Um, the guy was kind of spooky. Other than that, no. Did anything unusual occur while they were here? Not that I can remember. Do you have the make and license number of their rental car? Sure, it's on the form, assuming they told the truth. Could you write it down for me, please? Would you take us to their rooms, please? Sure, come this way. Here we go. This is his room. She stays next door. Thank you. I hope there aren't any dead bodies in here. I got finals coming up next week. You can get in and out through here. Did they ask you to unlock those doors? Did they look unlocked? No, they didn't. Thank you. We'll, uh, let you know if we need anything else. You know where to find me. Why don't you start with Mulder's room? I'll take Scully's.
I don't see anything out of the ordinary here. I can't decide if that's good or bad. How long have you known them? Four years now. I've known Mulder longer than that. I guess it's been uh, almost six. It would be helpful to know what case they were working on. Yes. Yes, it would be helpful. Listen, I'd appreciate it if you didn't uh, refer to them in the past tense. Huh? Do you know what Scully's password is? I don't know. Try Faith. What now? You keep a record of outgoing calls? Sure, for billing purposes. Could I get a copy, please? Great. Give me a minute. I want you to know you're putting me behind. Sorry, I don't mean to bother you at work. Funny. What's your major? I'm working on a law degree. Can you remember anything that might help us? No, I'm sorry. They checked in and left that evening. I didn't see them after that. I'll be reviewing my notes in the meeting room.
I don't believe we're done on the field, Agent Wilmore. It would be helpful to have some background on the case your agent was pursuing. Wouldn't it? When I have some, I'll share it with you. I'm gonna pretend you're not doing that. Why don't you check out the main floor? I'm going to take a look in there. Well, this phone is DOA. What's the matter with you?
I'll have some DNA tests run on the blood. I'll take a sample of the side crime lab in D.C. and have it analyzed. What do you think about that? I don't know, but I suggest you minimize your contact with it until we have it analyzed. What do you think about this? It's a popular brand. Why would Mulder and Scully have called this location? I'm not sure, but it's the best lead we've got. That blood is troubling. It doesn't look very good, does it? Let's have it analyzed and know it belongs to someone else. The bullet passed through. The victim may only have been injured. And that's assuming they were only shot once. But I appreciate your optimism, Agent Wilmore. If they were killed, where are the bodies? I doubt the killers would leave the bodies of two federal agents lying here for us to find. If they're dead, we'll probably never find them. Let's just hope that's not the case. Now, if we delay any longer, we'll be lucky to find anything. Agent Wilmore, FBI. I'd like to ask you a few questions. What's your name? James Wong. What can you tell me about that warehouse? Not much. It's a warehouse. I don't know. I just dock here. Yeah, they used to haul a lot of cargo in and out of there. Armed guards sometimes. Uh, lately, it's been pretty quiet, which ain't too surprising, considering what's been going on around here. Well, what exactly is that? Fish been drying up. Have you noticed any unusual activity? Not really, just the fact the warehouse has been a lot quieter than usual. You've been here this last week? Pretty much. You haven't seen or heard anything unusual? No, I try to get home by dusk, see my family. Tell me about your family. Why? I'm curious. Just want to know about your family, that's all. Okay. Wife, little girl. How old's your daughter? Seven. Young for a man your age. I'm surprised. I eat a lot of fish. Is your wife younger than you? Young enough to have a seven-year-old. How long have you been in this country? My accent give it away, huh? <laughs> Ten, eleven years, maybe. Where are you from, Mr. Wong? China. I left Canton in 1985. Can I get a cigarette from you? Sorry, I don't smoke. Gives you cancer. Don't you watch the news? So what's happened to the fishing? I don't know, but it's getting bad. Some folks say it's from overfishing. How long has this been going on? Long enough for a lot of guys to move on. Can't make ends meet. I'm thinking about it myself. Does this look familiar to you? No. What is it? Why don't you let me ask the questions? Any reason why we'd find blood in that warehouse? No. A industrial accident, maybe. I don't know. Sedan's been following us since we left the field office. Who do you think it is? Someone who's interested in what we're doing. What should we do about that car? I think that's your call, Agent Wilmore.
Hey, Mr. Wilmore. Good to see you. It's been a while. Hey, John. How have you been? Bored. I hope you have something real exciting for me. I do my best. So, what have you got? What's this, blood? Very good. You got a target to match it to? I can tell you the blood type, but without a target for a DNA test, there's not much I can do. What's the case? A couple of missing FBI agents. We think the blood may belong to one of them. That's too bad. I suggest you have the Psy Crime Lab in DC run it. They could probably match it against the uh, current agent database pretty quickly. One slug. Looks like a 38. It's not in very good shape. Standard stuff, I guess? Uh, yeah, I dug it out of a hunk of wood. You got it. No thanks, I'm trying to quit. That's very funny. Thank you. One Morley cigarette butt. I'll give it the once over. What have we here? You're gonna have to do better than this. I can tell you right now what this is. It's industrial grade lead. Lead? Yeah. Why lead? I don't know. It's uh, used for anything from weighing scuba divers to lining x-ray vests. Pretty common stuff. Is there any reason why someone would treat this like contraband? Nope. It's neither illegal nor sexy. There's no reason why anybody should want or need to smuggle it anywhere. You working on anything good? Nope. It's been very slow. I count on you FBI guys to keep my life interesting. How's your wife? Ex, you mean? She's good. She's taking the kids to her mom's for Easter. Yours? My wife? No, your ex-kids. Yeah, your wife. Good, I guess. We haven't really spoken in a while. Hey, don't you owe me a dollar? <laughs> From what, that basketball game? No way, that crooked partner of yours cheated. Cook? He never cheated a day in his life. Don't hold your breath over that buck. The boys in the crime lab are officially protesting.
Why were we being followed? I don't know, but whoever's involved in this case isn't afraid of the FBI. There could be an underworld connection. You think the blood belongs to one of your agents? I can't rule it out. But I'll wait for the test results before making a determination. I suggest you do the same, Agent Wilmore. I could run a DNA test on the saliva on that cigarette. Ah, that's a bit of a stretch, Agent Wilmore. I wouldn't waste my time. What do you think that powdered lead is being used for? I don't know. That one has me really stumped. It could be a byproduct of weapons manufacture. I suggest you conduct a little research. Is there any connection with the decline in fishing? I don't see any obvious connection. Port fishing isn't a federal offense. A.D. Skinner, you've got a call on line one. This is Skinner. I understand. I have to go back to Washington immediately. I'll take some of the blood back to the lab in D.C. for analysis. I want you to begin surveillance on that warehouse tonight. These two agents are very important to me. Hey, pal, how's it going out there? I'm sure you're sucking up to Skinner appropriately. Well, they're still missing. Thanks for the bulletin. But really, anything I can do to help? You can call Computer Crimes and have them check out this laptop. You got it. Thanks, man. I'll let you know what I find out.
did you get the did you get the number of that bus? You okay? Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna live, unfortunately. Until Shanks gets a hold of me. Oh. Well, we better see if anything's missing. Scully's laptop is missing. That's your phone. Is this uh, Agent Wilmore? Yes. Agent Wilmore, this is Agent Pendrel of the Psy Crime Lab in DC. Uh, I completed the preliminary analysis of the blood sample from your office. I'm afraid I got some bad news. It looks like that blood belongs to Agent Scully. Oh, Jesus. Are you certain? Fairly. I mean, a more detailed analysis will confirm, but I'm pretty sure that's Scully's blood. So at the very least, we know she's been injured. Um, was there much blood at the scene? Yeah, a fair amount. Well, let's hope it's not as bad as it looks. <sighs> yeah, okay. Thanks for the call. Sure. If uh, anything changes, I'll let you know. Sure, no problem. Oh, Agent Wilmore? Yeah? Keep me informed, okay? All right, thanks. More good news. That fisherman you interviewed yesterday, he's just been shot to death. So, what happened to you? I came in early to catch up on your work, and someone jumped me. Why did they only take Scully's laptop? You got me. Shanks is going to be furious. And not to mention Skinner. Oh, now there's something to look forward to. First they disappear, then we lose his prize agent's confidential records. I don't know what you're involved in, but someone's got some big brass ones in order to steal equipment from an FBI field office. How did you know about Wong? What? How did you know I went to see Wong yesterday? You told me. Hey, I was the one hit on the head, remember? I told you about Wong? I just forgot, I guess. Did you see who hit you? Nope. Whoever did it was real quiet. Hey, come on in. Well, congratulations, old-timer. I don't know what you were doing, but you just warranted the involvement of the federal government. Lucky you. So what have you got? Well, Agent Wilmore, barring any unexpected revelation, looks like somebody shot this man in the back of the head. So what was the time of death? Well, preliminarily, I'd say he's been dead for about six hours, so that would make the time of death early in the AM. What caliber weapon was used? Big, 45 looks like, maybe a 357. Hit him in the mastoid bone. That's that big, spongy mass of bone behind a ear. It shatters more easily, so there's an inordinate amount of damage. A lot of bone fragments get driven up into the brain. That's where Oswald hit JFK. I take it you subscribe to the lone gunman theory? No, I think aliens killed JFK. Any sign of a struggle? Nope. Either he was totally surprised or he knew his killer. I gather there were no witnesses. I don't think so, but you better check with Detective Astadorian. Medical examiner doesn't get much chance to interrogate bystanders. Have we met? Yeah, we both worked on that kidnapping last year, remember? Sorry. No problem. It was a big team. Any idea what happened? No. 
Any thought on motive? Robbery'd be my guess. Ask Aster Dorian. It's her case. Can I get some copies of those? Sure. Give me a name. Craig Wilmore, FBI. No problem. It'll take a couple days. What can I do for you? Special Agent Craig Wilmore, FBI. FBI? What's the Bureau's interest in this case? I'm investigating the disappearance of two agents. OK, so what's the connection to this man? My investigation led me to this warehouse. Inside, we found evidence of foul play, including the blood of one of our missing agents. I spotted Wong, asked him a few questions about the warehouse. He lied to me. Now he's dead. I'm not certain what the connection is, but I'm pretty certain there is one. I'll buy that. Interesting. This case just went from routine to fun. Thanks. Anytime. So, what have you got? Harbor Master found the body. He was shot once in the back of the head, large caliber by the looks of it, no witnesses, no sign of struggle. That's it? So far. So, where's the Harbor Master? Gone for coffee. Have you questioned him yet? Nope. Next on my list after search boat. Any thoughts on motive? Robbery, most likely. So what was stolen? Haven't quite gotten there yet. Just about to go onto the boat. Well, robbery seems unlikely to me. Didn't look like the old guy had much. Probably true. But you'd be amazed at what people will kill for. He probably had a cigar box full of cash. Unless maybe he was killed for squealing to the feds. I wish I thought that was funny. Well, Wong didn't exactly run with the most desirable crowd. Any reports of trouble in this area? No. All's quiet on the waterfront. It's too bad. Yeah. Wouldn't it be nice to just pin this on gang activity and be done with it? All right, looks like it's time to board the good ship Agrippa. Care to join me? There's no freezers. Hell, there's not even an ice chest on board. So where the fish go? And by the looks of it, those are some pretty serious gas tanks down there. So, what's your theory on the hold? My guess is that Wong was not quite what he seemed. I think this boat was being used for something other than fishing, which certainly puts a spin on his murder. So, what's your theory on the hold? My guess is that Wong was not quite what he seemed. I think this boat was being used for something other than fishing, which certainly puts a spin on his murder. Did you know fish stocks have been declining in this area recently? No. Where'd you pick that up at? Wong told me yesterday. Ah, oh, well, there's a reliable source. Did you know Mr. Wong was taking stolen painkillers? What the hell are you talking about? 
I found a cache of pills in his cabin. No prescription labels, obviously stolen goods. Industrial state quantities, too. How interesting. Well, that certainly adds a sordid little wrinkle to things, doesn't it? So, you still think the motive for his murder was robbery? Let's just see what the autopsy reveals, all right? What's the Terracon? What? Terracon. What is it? I don't know. Why? I found this slicker in the cabin labeled the Terracon. I guess it's the name of the boat. No, no, no. This boat's called the Agrippa. Well, I guess that adds another mystery to your list, doesn't it? I'm finished. I'm gonna take Wong here for his free ride. Ask her to give me a call when she's finished. Okay. It was a pretty easy morning. It shouldn't take too long. Thanks. Well, the harbor master's returned. Well, hello. I wish you told me there was two of you. I'd have brought another coffee. That's all right. Agent Wilmore here is trying to cut down. Well, still, I could have brought your decaf. How long have you known Wong? Oh, a few years. Started docking here in 94, I think. Yeah, early 94. Did you notice anything unusual happening here last night? No, none at all. In fact, it was real quiet. Did Mr. Wong have any enemies? I don't think so. I, I would say no, but, uh, hell, these days, I don't know anything anymore. Did you know if Mr. Wong had any financial difficulties? No, I don't. I always paid his birth fees on time. Of course, things have been hard on everybody around here lately. I imagine he was feeling it, too. How do these boats normally store their catch? Well, usually they got what they call a, a live well in the hole that uh, keeps water circulating over the fish. Uh, some of the bigger outfits will have a refrigerated holding tank. Any idea why Wong's boat would have neither? No, no. I don't imagine he had the money to upgrade something like that. Uh, That'd have to be done in a dry dock anyway. That's that's pretty strange, really. I, I don't know why. How long have the fish stocks been declining around here? Oh, a while now. Overfishing's the most likely cause, but it's uh, gotten a lot worse in the past couple of months. Most of the small guys gone out of business. Wong's the only one still holding on. Or he was. Who owns this warehouse? Leased to a company called Majestic Shipping out of the Far East. Could you give me a phone number? Well, depends on which number you want. They got offices in Hong Kong, Chechnya. So, which number? The main number. No, no, these guys don't quite work like that. But it's okay, I'll, uh, I'll get you all the information I have. Just uh, fax it to me. What's the Terracon? A ocean-going tug. It uh, burned at sea two months ago. Really? Why would Wong have a slicker from the Terracon in his cabin? Well, I don't know. Don't think he knew those guys. Uh, they were Russian. Maybe he picked it up as scrap after the fire. I think I remember hearing something about that. The crew all died, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. Boat's over at the impound dock. You want to take a look? Well, why don't we go take a look at the Terracon? Well, sure, yeah. It's not far from here. Come on. Seattle. Anyway, uh, Coast Guard cutter, the stalwart, saw a fire on the horizon, rushed out there. By the time they arrived, it was too late. The entire crew had burned to death. How many men were on board? Total of nine. Although only four bodies were recovered, the rest were presumed lost at sea. What was the cause of the fire? Never determined. They have no idea. Look at that. 
Fire damage seems to be contained to the outside of the hull. The cabin and the interior don't seem to be burnt at all. Okay, so what's your point? Well, how was the crew killed by a fire that only burned the hull? For that matter, why did the fire only burn the hull in the first place? <laughs> Got me. You're the detectives. Uh, look, do you mind if I go? I, I got a lot of forms to fill out. You know, uh, when there's a dead body, wow, paperwork. Sure, you can go. I'll call you if I need anything. Thanks. Oh, no problem. Well, it was nice to meet you, and I'll fax you those phone numbers. Well, looks like it's just you and me.
Let me know if you see anything. Place looks like it's already been dusted for prints. Oh yeah, so it has. Probably from the first investigation into the fire. Hey, this is strange. It looks like there's a fresh set of prints over the top of the old ones. Yeah, somebody's put their hand on this after it's already been dusted. Either that's pretty sloppy police work or somebody else has been here. Well, we better have them lifted. Hmm. I'm not having much luck over here so far. This looks interesting. Looks like Cyrillic. Seattle PD has a task force investigating smuggling out of the former Soviet Union. They've got a full-time translator over there. I can get it translated. Okay. Well, that was easy. I thought certainly you would give me grief about that. No, if Seattle PD has the resources, let's take advantage of them. Well, that's a commendable attitude. Look at this. What is it? I have no idea. Well, be careful with it. Relax. It looks like an explosive device. Well, it could be. It's certainly heavy enough. Maybe we should call in a hazmat team. <laughs> let's not overreact, okay? What the hell are you doing? You really need to cut down to one cup a day. It's empty. What is it? I don't know. But I do know one very happy lab technician. I bet the previous investigation was less than thorough. We should go over this thing with a fine-tooth comb. Come with me. I want to show you something. See these outlines here on the side of the cabin? Yeah, it's kind of frightening, isn't it? What causes it? I have no idea. It reminds me of pictures I've seen of Hiroshima. How's that? Well, the blast from the bomb left the outline of people behind. I don't know why. I can barely remember it. I was only a kid when I saw the picture. Jesus, scared the bejesus out of me. I can't help but feel like we've missed something. John, it's Craig. I need a set of prints lifted. Ooh, field work, my favorite. Where? Candid impound dock. The boat's called the Terracon. These are prints that were laid on top of a previously dusted set. I love a challenge. Flag the spot for me. I'll take care of it. Hey, Detective. Truett from the coroner's office just called. They've completed the autopsy on Mr. Wong. She's found something you ought to see. Well, it looks like we're headed to the coroners. I can hardly wait. Your tax dollars at work. Hey, do the words lunch hour mean anything to you? You're in a mood today. What do you want? Yowza. What is this? A bomb? Uh, I don't know. I don't think so. 
but I do need you to tell me just what the hell it is. Your wish is my command. Did you get those prints lifted? What do you mean? You just called. I'll get to it after lunch. You heard from Gloria? Nope, she's still at her mom's. Hey, when are you gonna pay me that dollar? Did you know that I grew up in Cleveland? Oh, Cleveland? Really? Yes. And as a child, I've always regarded it as hell. Do you have any idea how cold it is in Cleveland? Cold. Very cold. It is very cold in Cleveland today. But not cold enough. You working on anything good? Yes, actually. Uh, an art theft. Very cool stuff. Mom's the word. Ah, so the comic book is research. This is Agent Wilmo with the FBI. He questioned Wong yesterday. I hope you found out everything you needed to know. What have you got? This is undoubtedly one of the most unusual autopsies I've ever performed. This man died from a single gunshot wound to the back of the head. Large caliber weapon, point blank range. He was also a drug user. It looks like he was high at the time of death. That would account for the lack of struggle. But if the slug or the drugs didn't kill him, this man would have been dead within a matter of weeks anyway. Oh, Jesus. Why? He was completely riddled with massive tumors. I've never seen anything like it. What would cause something like that? I have no idea. But I've never seen a human being so eaten alive with cancer. <sighs> God, I hate coming here. You know, so do I. How long had he been taking drugs? Well, it's hard to say. Organ tissue and blood samples may provide some evidence, but it still could be hard to determine. The evidence of massive tumors suggests that the subject was suffering severe pain, and the drugs could have been used to mitigate the pain. What kind of cancer was it? Well, here's the weird thing. You see, these, these are three separate kinds of cancer. It wouldn't surprise me if it turned out he had a few more. It's as if his entire endocrine and immune system suddenly went haywire. Is there a name for this? Bizarre. No, I mean, is there a syndrome or something that explains it? No, not that I've ever heard of. How do you know he was high? Well, it's mainly a hunch. Little things, a state of craniovascular relaxation, total dilation of the pupils, things like that. I've seen it before, but the blood work will confirm it. What could have caused cancer like this? I have no idea. This isn't exactly my field, first of all, but I can't imagine what would trigger something like this. Some kind of massive carcinogenic exposure, I guess. Radioactive materials, certain classes of powerful mutagenic chemicals. Those are the only things that track with what I know. How long had he been ill? Tumors are highly unpredictable. A growth of this size would seemingly take a fair amount of time, but he would have been in immense pain. Which might explain the illicit drug use. Even with the drugs, a condition like this would be almost impossible to ignore. And the amount of drugs he'd have to take to ease the pain would make him a near zombie. Strange. Have you seen anything else like this recently? No, thank God. Is that the slug? Yes, it is. I'd like to have it analyzed. That'd be all right, I suppose. There was a case a couple of months ago, a fire at sea, the... The Terracan, sure. I remember it. You're the second FBI agent to ask me about that this week. What are you talking about? Well, actually, to be specific, you're the third FBI agent. There were a pair here the other day, a man and a woman. They had the bodies of the Terracan crew members exhumed. She insisted on performing a second autopsy.
What were their names? Sorry, I'll have to look that up. I see a lot of names. It was Mulder and Scully, wasn't it? Yes. Diana Scully and Wolf Mulder, that's right. What did she find? I have no idea. The bodies are still here if you want to see them. What were the results of the original autopsy? They died of severe burns. We want to see them. All right. You're not squeamish, I hope. Got a coming here. Fair warning, this is going to be pretty bad. These guys had been interred for two months. You all right? Just peachy, thanks. Can we get this over with, please? Sure. I don't know what the hell's going on here. I think someone's stolen the bodies from the Terracan. You two stay here. I'll get to the bottom of this. I'll let you know if I find anything. <sighs> what the hell have we stumbled onto here? This case is much bigger than I first thought. Boy, that's an understatement. Oh, my God. What is it? I think I know what's going on here. Oh, Jesus. I hope I'm wrong. What? They're smuggling something. They're smugglers. Wong worked for the same people as the crew of the Terracon. That would explain the slicker and the lack of fishing equipment. So, they worked for the same people. You questioned Wong. He was killed because they thought he talked. Your two missing agents have the crew from the Terracon exhumed and both they and the corpses turn up missing? We've stumbled upon a smuggling ring bringing either radioactive material or possibly chemical weapons into the U.S. from the former Soviet Union. That explains the fire on the Terracon, Wong's cancer, why he was killed, and what happened to your two missing agents. They got too close. Someone's covering their tracks and they're not afraid to shoot FBI agents to do it. You and I have to work together. We have to stop this. If I'm right, thousands of people might die. I'm gonna have to demand that we cooperate fully with one another. Okay. You just got yourself a new partner. Ah, another hunk of lead. I love bullets. Simple, tough, silent. Kind of like you there, Wilmore. Yet in the right hand, they speak volumes. You want I should match this against the last one? Astute as always. I shall make it so. Did you get those prints lifted? I just fetched them, Miss Daisy. I still need to process them. And they say sugar has no effect on children. You've got mail.
What are you doing? No, ma'am, what the hell are you doing? You're supposed to be keeping me informed about your case. Have I been informed? No. I've been kept completely in the dark. You know the policy, always have a backup. What if some... Hey, whoa, 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 slow down. Let's talk about this, okay? There's no need to go ballistic, let's just talk. Oh man, I don't know what the hell's the matter with me. I'm losing it. I've been being followed by two guys in a sedan. I don't know who the hell they are or who they work for, but they're obviously government. I think Mulder and Scully stumbled onto some kind of corruption that runs all the way into the Bureau itself. There's not much evidence to support that. Maybe, maybe not. But at this point, that's really kind of a matter of opinion. All right, so fill me in. Doesn't look good. Mulder and Scully had some bodies exhumed for autopsies, and they were stolen out of the morgue. Wong was totally eaten alive with cancer. Signs are that there's a smuggling ring bringing in radioactive materials to uh, Seattle from the Far East in Russia. I think Mulder and Scully got too close. So, who were the suits in the sedan? I don't know. I haven't figured that one out yet. We need to be incredibly careful. They could well be coming after us next. Just keep me in the loop. The more I know, the better I can do my job. <sighs> I've just been a little busy. Sure. sure, but we're not talking about your grocery list here. This case has probably already cost the lives of two agents. Listen, just keep me in the loop. The more I know, the better I can do my job. So why were your fingerprints found on the Terracon? What? The Terracon. It's an ocean-going tug. Burned its... <laughs> I know what it is. What are you saying? I'm just trying to figure out how come your fingerprints were found on a ship that's been involved in ten deaths, two disappearances, and you should probably never even have heard of. Listen, I was called in to investigate that fire two months ago when it happened. I didn't find anything. It took me a couple of hours, that's it. So why did I never hear of it? Geez, I don't know, maybe you were in the can. Look, I never mentioned it because it was way below radar. I filed my report with Shanks, end of story. All right, I may have left a set of prints, but that's all I did wrong. Wait a minute. Maybe that's why I'm being followed. I assumed the crew were smugglers, right? I, that's what my report said. And if they've seen my report, and someone in the Bureau is involved. No, listen, this all makes perfect sense. There's a massive smuggling ring paying federal officials, maybe even FBI agents, to not only look the other way, but to provide outright assistance, including following agents who get just a little too close to the truth. Jesus, there's no way of knowing how high this goes. All right, look. We can't take any chances. You keep me in the loop. I don't want you to talk to anybody else but me until we can figure out what the hell is going on here. I better get out of here before my car is spotted. Okay. I gotta get to a stakeout. At the warehouse? Mm -hmm. Watch your ass.
You've got mail. Do I have news? Good morning. What's the matter with you? I worked last night. What's the matter with you? I didn't. What time is it? Almost noon. We have a burn victim, and the injuries appear to match those sustained by the crew of the Terracon. I have the whole thing on tape. Let me just rewind it. Hey, it's not flashing midnight. Impressive. I like a man who's not afraid of technology. Who's the victim? A John Doe. He was a truck driver for Gordon's Hauling in Charno. How do you know about the Terracon injuries? I got the original autopsy reports. I have them if you want to see them. Where did you get the videotape? Surveillance cam at the gas station. It's not great video, but it still shows the... thing. What thing? Uh, you'll see. What time did this occur? 6.17 a.m. this morning. That could be Mulder's rental car. Same make. That looks like Mulder. Have you seen him? No, just photos. That guy was at the warehouse last night. Different truck, same company, Gordon's Hauling. Charno, Washington. So, what do you think? What was that? I have no idea, but his injuries are identical to those from the Terracon, and all of the gas station's electronic equipment stopped working. So what do you think it is? That light looked like it was coming out of that man's body. Yeah, it did, didn't it? So what the hell was that all about? Sounds like you have a fax. The body's over at Truett's right now. I'm going to head on over there and see what she's found out. Oh, I got that Cyrillic document translated. Get this. It was a payroll log. And guess who was on it? Wong. He was paid almost $30,000 in the last two months, so I am convinced that the murder was mob-related. Probably because you questioned him. So I guess you did get him killed. I've turned the case over to the task force. So, what's the connection with Gordon's Hauling? You mean, why was a Gordon's Hauling truck both here and at the warehouse? Yeah. They were involved in the smuggling. Where's the truck? Totally empty. I've got an evidence crew going over it right now. Where does Terracon fit into all this? 
Obviously, they were part of the smuggling. Either they fried themselves mishandling plutonium, or someone had them killed. What did the man from Charno want with Mulder, assuming that was Mulder? I don't know, but whatever it was, it didn't look friendly. Who was he? Don't have an ID on him yet. He was very badly burned. What about uh, Gordon's Holland? Can somebody over there ID him? Nobody answers the phone, and apparently there's no one on the premises. I sent a Duval County Sheriff over there. No luck. We need to focus on Mulder and Scully. Where are they? All this, this voodoo with flashing lights and burnt corpses is not the case we're here to solve. I don't agree. If we can understand what this is about, then we can find your missing agents. Well, that settles it. They're smuggling plutonium. God, we have to stop this. They could kill a lot of people. Okay, cowboy, let's go. We're burning daylight. Where are we going? To the coroner's office to get the autopsy reports on the burn victims. Can I shower first? I don't know, can you? I may need some help. Then I guess you better call that partner of yours. I hear Cook scrubs a mean back. God, I hate coming here. As near as I can tell, this man wasn't burned to death in any ordinary sense. He has all the appearances of suffering from Hiroshima-like radiation exposure. What makes you think it's radiation? Well, first off, I don't know much about it, but he was burned from head to toe, literally. Fire damage never does that. Secondly, I cut his clothes off him. They were pretty much undamaged. You see this? That's the imprint of the logo from his shirt. That's caused by thermic rays. Similar effects were observed at Hiroshima. Kimono patterns were burned into the skin of the wearer. Inverse shadows of objects were permanently etched into walls. Are there any similarities between this and the Terracon victims? The effects are almost identical. We didn't figure it out with the Terracan because, well, it really didn't occur to us. I mean, this is highly unusual stuff, you know. Sometimes we don't see the extraordinary even when it's right in front of us because, well, we just weren't expecting it. Any leads on the missing Terracon crew? No. Whoever did it was good. They got in here, got the bodies without leaving a trace of any kind. Could mishandling radioactive materials cause burns like this? Again, I don't think so, but I don't know much about it. Mishandling radioactive materials might account for Mr. Wong's tumors, but a burn like this would have to be a blast of some sort. Well, they're obviously not very security-minded. I know, with all this nice stuff around, too. It's the same truck from the warehouse. We're obviously in the right place.
you all right? It's okay. I found what we're looking for. What is it? Look at this. It's a manifest. It details a number of shipments between that uh, dockside warehouse and uh, rural Route 1121 in Fanta County, Washington. I guess I know where we're headed. This wasn't a wasted trip after all. Great. Let's get out of here. Yeah. Locked in. Oh my God. There's a bomb in here. We have to get out of here now. Oh my God, there's a bomb in here. We have to get out of here now. Like this, I wish I still smoked. Are you all right? Oh, yeah, I find things like this quite bracing. So I guess you're gonna want me to drive. <laughs> that would be a nice gesture. I never survived a bomb before. Yeah, well, it happens to me all the time. Um, you probably shouldn't do that. I mean, I would love for you to, don't get me wrong, but we should probably wait until this case is wrapped before we go. Tampering with the evidence? Who was that guy? He was incredibly strong. Yeah, I kind of got that impression. You think he works out? There was something weird about his eyes. Did you see that? No, I was too busy being knocked across the room to catch that little detail. He seemed... There was something wrong with him. Almost like he was being controlled by something. So, who owns the hauling yard? Duh, Russian mobsters. Actually... I guess we know why the gate was left open. You mean it wasn't just small town coziness? No. The gate was left open so somebody would get in there and set that bomb off. Yeah, but was it meant for us or that guy? Was the bomb meant as a trap, or was it protecting something in the office? Like what? Information in that logbook? The rural route address, for instance? Well, anything in there would be pretty hard to read now, that's for sure. I think the bomb was meant to trap and kill somebody. <sighs> Are you ready to go? I sure am. You're driving, remember? Right.
Hey, buddy. Good news. What's going on? I'll tell you what's going on. I cracked your case for you. What are you talking about? Evgeny Smolnikov, known head of a ring of Georgian smugglers. And I have a witness who placed him at the dock the night of Wong's murder. I ordered surveillance on his little love nest, and since this morning, we've accumulated enough evidence to warrant a raid. We leave ASAP. The SWATs are joining us at the site. No need to thank me. What about Astadorian? You should call and tell her what you're doing. Done. Already left her a message. I'm the Martha Stewart of crime prevention. And if she gets her took us down here before we leave, she's welcome to play too. You have a warrant? What do I look like, Mark Furman? <laughs> yes. I have a federal warrant from a federal judge. Who's the witness? What witness? The identified Smolnikov? Oh, yeah. Fred Kohler, 56, indigent. Was sleeping under a tuna net not 50 yards away from the murder. Heard and saw everything. I'd like to question him. Sure. Whatever you want. After the raid, he's all yours. Now let's go. Where's the backup? I called Seattle PD SWAT boys, they're on the way. Well, we should wait. I say we get this over with. Surveillance reported that Smolnikov entered the building alone. You were saying? After you. Cover me. You got it. Don't move. Cut. Get down here. I've got him. I'm following you. Where were you? Secure in the first floor. Okay, Mr. Smolnikov. What gives? Why are you here? I've done nothing. You have no right to come in here like this. This isn't Russia. Shut up. You're under arrest. I'll Miranda him, you secure the place. 
I spotted a 38 downstairs back left corner. You're right, it's a 38. Yeah, and I bet you it's the same gun that killed Wong and shot Scully. You better get a ballistics test run. It isn't my gun. Yeah, yeah. Look at this. It's a payroll manifest. It's a match of the one we found on Terracon. It's in your best interest to cooperate, Mr. Smolnikov. Why did you kill Wong? Because he talked to us? What are you trying to hide? I didn't kill Wong. I knew him. He maybe did some work for me, but I didn't kill him. Why did you kill the Terracons crew? I didn't kill nobody. They were my men. Why would I kill them? There was a fire. Right. A fire you set afterwards to hide what you'd done. I may be a smuggler, so are lots of people, but I didn't kill anybody. We have payroll logs from the Terracon that show that Wong worked for you. We found documents that match downstairs. So? That proves nothing. What did you keep in that warehouse? What do you mean? You're in my warehouse. You're right. It's a 38. Yeah. It isn't like up. Yeah, yeah. 
Where's the plutonium you were smuggling? What? I handle all sorts of things, but never that. You are talking crazy. Don't do that. Hey, Sleeping Beauty. Wilmore. How's it going? Good. How are you? You don't look so good. I don't feel so hot. What's wrong? I don't know. I think I'm coming down with the flu or something. What's up? I suppose you want me to fire that. You guessed it. Great. My headache just went away. I'm sorry. You really don't feel good, do you? Nope. Let's go. Sure enough, they all three match. Great. Thanks, man. I hope you're feeling better. You have mail. Where are the FBI agents? What are you talking about? We found the woman's blood in your warehouse. What warehouse? You're in my warehouse. Your gun shot her. We have a forensics match. I kill no FBI agents. All right, let's get them downtown and process them. Come on. We'll interrogate them some more once we get this sorted out. Get the local police to secure the warehouse. Let's go. It's Amos. That boat you sent me onto was radioactive. What? That boat, the Terracon, had dangerously high levels of radioactivity. He sent me into a hot area. That's what's wrong with me. I don't have the flu. I have radiation sickness. Oh man, John, I am so sorry. I don't know what to say. Just be more careful before you get somebody killed. were you thinking? About what? About your little raid on the smugglers. I had turned that case over to the task force and you two cowboys go running off shooting up a place without so much as a phone call. Do you have any idea how stupid I look? Cook called you. He did not. He did. He said he asked for SWAT backup, though they never did show up and we could have used the support. Do you need to get that? Uh, no, the machine will pick up. I guess I just had you all wrong. Agent Wilmore, we must meet right away. Your actions are endangering the lives of Mulder and Scully. They are alive, but they won't be for much longer unless you act quickly. This has nothing to do with Russian smugglers. Sandpoint, Hangar 4, Dawn. Come alone, or I won't show up. I don't know what kind of ridiculous Twilight Zone BS that you're involved with. And you know what? I don't care. 
I only came over here to tell you one thing. Smolnikov was just released for lack of evidence. Agent Romo, I'm so glad to see that you took my advice and came up. So, it's the mystery man. I was expecting someone a little more Sean Connery. I think that'll be quite enough, Agent Romo. We don't have much time, so I want you to listen to me very carefully. The most important thing is that you cannot tell anyone that I was here or that we spoke. No one in the Bureau. Not Cook. Not Shanks, nor that Seattle police detective you've been teamed up with. Do you understand me? I need your word on this, Agent Wilmore, or I won't help you. You have my word. Good. Listen very carefully to what I have to tell you. Lives are at stake here, including your own. Mulder and Scully are still alive. So you said. But they won't be much longer if you don't do something about it. Scully and Mulder are not together. You need to find the Jane Doe that was checked into the Presbyterian Hospital in Gold Bar three days ago. She's about to be released. This has nothing, I repeat, nothing to do with smuggled Soviet plutonium. I've had a feeling that was the case. Listen to me. If you're going to help Scully and Mulder, you're going to need something more than a gun. Men have died in order to possess this. I'm going to loan it to you for a short time, because without it, there's no way that you could survive. The man that Mulder and Scully were looking for and the man that you need to find if you're going to save them can only be killed by inserting this blade into the base of his neck. Who is he? This man is not what he seems. If the injury is not precise, he will kill you. Do not try firing a gun. Don't attempt to do anything except to use this. If anyone discovers that you have it, you're a dead man. Don't 
forget the Jane Doe at Gold Bar. Whoa! Take it easy, it's me. I can see that. You get grumpy when your asses run ragged, don't you? What are you doing here? Are you kidding? After that phone message, I wouldn't have missed this for the world. Yeah, well, you better be careful or you may run your ass ragged. I wouldn't mind that. It was kind of cute. Cute. Precious springs to mind. So, we kind of have a lot to talk about, don't we? Yeah, I guess we do. But first, Jane Doe and Goldbar. Hello. May I ask your business here? We're looking for Dana Scully. And who might you be? I'm with the FBI. May I see some identification? Yes. Uh, do you recall the name of her immediate superior? I need to phone him and I've misplaced his information. Walter Skinner. This is her room behind me. How was her wound? It's begun healing. It was mostly superficial. As to her other condition, I have no idea how to account for it. Has anyone else come to see her? Oh, no. Thank God you're the first. How did she get here? She was brought in. By whom? This is what used to be called a sanitarium, Detective. We're not bound by the same strictures as a conventional hospital, nor would we follow them. We pride ourselves on discretion for the patients, the better they can heal. What other condition? I haven't been able to diagnose it yet, so I've been treating the symptoms. Lethargy, nausea, extreme listlessness, dehydration, memory loss. Is she ready to leave yet? Oh, I wouldn't think so. Moving wouldn't be life-threatening, but she might not find it very pleasant. Are you Dana Scully? Who are you? Assistant Director Skinner asked us to look for you. I didn't know I was lost. Who are you? Agent Wilmore. How do I know I can trust you? Who told you I was here? It was the man who gave me this. All right. He told me I couldn't tell anyone about it. Let's talk. How do you feel? Very weak, but actually I feel a lot better than I did when I first came in here. Do you have any idea where Mulder is? I have no idea, but we need to find him. Could you have radiation poisoning? God, I hope not. But I suppose the symptoms do line up. Where does the Terracon fit into all this? Well, one way or another, they were involved in smuggling. I think that's a given. I think that there was an accident at sea involving plutonium, and Mulder thinks that they were somehow killed by an EBE. EBE? Extraterrestrial biological entity. What did your autopsy on the crewman reveal? The crew had all been exposed to levels of radiation consistent with a large-scale nuclear blast. Now clearly that didn't happen, but Mulder took that as proof that a UFO had landed in the area and that an alien life form aboard the craft had irradiated the Terracon crew. I take it you don't subscribe to that theory? There is always an alternate explanation. What happened in the warehouse? Mulder and I observed some suspicious traffic in and out of the warehouse. We went in to investigate. We were attacked by a number of armed men. I was shot. 
There was an odd light. Mulder carried me out of the warehouse. I blacked out and I woke up here. What is this used for? You shouldn't show that quite so openly. I don't know what it's used for. Perhaps Mulder can tell you. I'm afraid that's all I have to offer. What can you two tell me? Well, there have been other burn victims. I hope that doesn't mean that plutonium was being transported. There's an unidentified man involved. We encountered him at the burn site and then later again at the hauling yard. We found a connection between the warehouse and the hauling yard. It's a trucking outfit in Charna, Gordon's Hauling. They've made numerous deliveries between the warehouse and a rural route that we haven't had a chance to investigate. Seems to me that we need to find the identity of the man from the hauling yard and that you two need to pay a visit to the rural route address. What are you going to do? Well, the first thing I'm going to do is get in touch with Assistant Director Skinner and then I'm going to check out of here. I can meet up with you two later at your field office, but I think that we have to hurry. Agent Mulder may be running out of time and if the smugglers do have him held hostage, they have little incentive to keep him alive. PDA of yours was right. I'm impressed. Hey, I'm not afraid of technology. What is it that we're looking for again? Rear quarter panel from a 64 Dodge Dart. Something with the number 82434 on it, right? That's the idea. Looks like we got our work cut out for us. Mm. Whose theory do you believe? Mulder's or Scully's? Scully's obviously a by-the-book agent. I think it's great to hear of a detective who's a creative thinker. I'm looking forward to meeting Agent Mulder. What could they use this place for? Are you kidding? I'm surprised their operation is this big. The thought of plutonium traveling all over the country via rail is pretty terrifying. Especially considering Amtrak's record. Yeah. This yard is deserted. These boxcars haven't been used in years.
This car's been burned. Well, obviously this fire is recent. This looks like an operating room of some kind. Hey! I didn't do nothing. Nobody said that you did. We just want to talk to you. Is this your home? Home is where the heart is, near or far away. That was informative. See anything strange around here? Uh, just the two of you. And the birds, of course. He's a nut. You seen any men in suits or uniforms running around? Oh yeah, all the time. Really? Yeah, ask Jane. I'm besieged by sniveling toadies trying to cheat me out of my sugar fortune. It's been a fire in a boxcar back there. You know anything about that? Sure, Don. I saw the guys who said it. What did they look like? Bloodless yuppies in cheap suits. Two of them. They backed that car up here yesterday and set fire to it. In my own backyard. Can you believe that? Uh, I have some stuff, Don. Got it out of that burnt car. You may want it. What kind of stuff? Oh, from the boxcar? Yeah, the boxcar. You tell me, Don. What kind of stuff do I have? Photographs. Photos? I'm not saying yes. I'm not saying no. You're in the neighborhood. Moving pictures. Yes and no. Videotape? Yes, sir. We have a winner. Videotape it is. Congratulations. That was fun. I really enjoyed that. Thank you. Uh, ten bucks. Pleasure doing business with you. Thanks. Put it in. What's up? Mark Cook, Mary Astadorian. Mary Astadorian, Mark Cook. Nice to meet you. Okay, somebody's obviously cutting on something. What do these clandestine medical experiments have to do with Russian smugglers? Yeah, and if this guy's a surgeon, what was he looking for at Gordon's Halling? And what was that experiment being performed? I don't know. Whatever it was, the patient didn't look human. Is there any way to ID the good doctor there? Yeah, all you gotta do is take a frame of the video and match it against the databases. It can definitely be done. Okay, so let's do it.
Bingo. Okay, what do we have here? Dr. Jonathan Rausch. That's him, all right. Wow. The military, huh? Yeah, looks that way. What's that? Someone's trying to establish a video conferencing link. Oh, what the hell. Never really tried to use this thing before. Agent Wilmore? Yes. Ah, we're in the right place. Who are you? Friends of Agent Scully. Some of us are more than just friends. She asked us to contact you. How did you get this address? Well, we assumed you had the standard issue bureau box on your desktop. And all those are equipped for full duplex video conferencing, though nobody ever uses it. So we just looked you up in the Peekaboo white pages, which lists the DNS entry and IP address of every Peekaboo equipped machine in the country. Pretty straightforward, really. You want Janet Reno's number? Uh, no, I'll, I'll pass, thanks. Are you sure? She keeps the computer in the bedroom. What do you want? Agent Scully contacted us with information about the case you're working on. Now, based on what Dana told us, we believe that there's a top-secret facility in Alaska involved. Okay, what's the big deal about Alaska? Well, this facility is used as a nexus point for most of the government's West Coast boxcar work. If this is true, Mulder's an incredible danger. This facility was built in the early 60s. We think they chose Alaska so they can use the Aurora Borealis to hide UFO traffic into and out of the base. We also think an alien craft recovered in the Pacific is stored there. What's boxcar work? Ah, one of the great unspoken peace dividends. The government has a massive network of rail cars, which they can use as mobile surgical theaters, autopsy rooms, and quarantine facilities. These boxcars have a twofold purpose. They allow the government to quickly pick up and transport stray EBEs, and they serve as a mobile base of operations for a series of genetic experiments. What kind of genetic experiments? The cross-pollinization of the human race, intermingling human DNA with genetic material from EBEs. Great, I don't believe this. Suddenly I'm Barbara Bain to you and Martin Landau. Where is Mulder? We're not sure, but knowing Mulder, if there's a trail leading to this facility, he's following it. Scully mentioned an unidentified man who was of some concern. Did you manage to determine his identity? Yeah, Dr. Jonathan Rausch, a Navy surgeon. You know, where's he stationed? Eisenhower Field, Alaska. Oh, yeah, that's the guy. He served a stint in Perky, West Virginia? Yes. <sighs> this is bad. Listen, you have to get there. Mulder may not have much time left. First go to Rausch's house and then on to the secret base. Okay, how do I get to the base? Well, Scully said you had a PDA? Yeah. Great, I'll email you the GPS coordinates of the base. This fax. The Canadian border guard was found dead this morning from massive unexplained burns and Mulder's rental car was observed crossing the Canadian border into Alaska. I don't believe this. Well, that's it then. Uh, no doubt about it. You're gonna have to get there ASAP. I just uploaded the GPS data. Okay, if you want to keep Mulder alive, we gotta get moving. You get to Roush's. You're probably going to want to take a charter flight. The island's going to be too busy. I'll keep everything nailed down here. Contact the Juno field office, get you some backup. Think you can scare up a charter flight for this man? Sure, I can do that. OK, let's go. You want a window or an aisle seat? Well, maybe you should come with me. I don't think so. Why not? It's your case, too. Yeah, Alaska's a little outside my jurisdiction. Besides, I have real detective work to do. You be safe. I will. You have mail.
Hey, wake up. What happened to you? Where's Mulder? Jeez, man, do I know you? Cable guy. You all right? No. What's the matter? My foot's gone to sleep. <laughs> Agent Wilmore, FBI. Funny, I took you for a spook. I've been looking for you. Well, you found me. I've spoken with Scully. How is she? She's better. She's out of the hospital. No, it's a sanitarium. I dropped her off there after she was shot in the warehouse. I called the Seattle office for more backup, but all they sent me was more cleaners from the NSA. Who'd you speak to? I didn't have time to ask. We barely got away. I, I, I didn't want to notify anybody of Scully's whereabouts because I didn't know who I could trust. How did you get here? I was in a rail yard when Roush kidnapped me and stole my car. I always wanted to see the Pacific Northwest. Unfortunately, there's not much view from the trunk. Well, let me guess. Was this uh, rail yard on rural Route 1121? You got it. They use it as a staging area. Yeah, so I've been told. Roush is downstairs. You're kidding. He didn't flame you? I beg your pardon? Uh, nothing. What condition is he in? Uh, unconscious and covered in 40-weight motor oil. Oh, Roush. Yeah, he always did have a kinky streak. Why did Roush kidnap you? Roush is a Navy surgeon who's involved in alien experimentation. The alien that controlled him, or controls him, crashed into the sea two months ago. You did say the alien that controlled him. Well, there's a species of alien that can use humans as host. The, the parasite completely takes over the target human, even gaining access to knowledge that the human possesses. The only way you can tell the difference is there's a thin film of black oil that swims over the victim's eyes. The crew of the Tarakan came across one of these Valdez-type aliens, who promptly nuked them. The government apprehended it and put it in one of their boxcars, but somebody screwed up and it escaped. Yeah, Roush had that uh, same black film on his eyes. Yeah, you're lucky he didn't try to kill you. I'm pretty sure the alien's trying to get back to its ship. That's why it used Roush to get here, but I have no idea where that ship might be. As I was coming up, I saw a man in black fatigue leaving the house. Well, we've got to catch up with him. He's the new host. But we have to figure out where they're headed. I know. I was given the location of a secret government facility by three men via video conference. Oh, that sounds like a reliable source. Frohickey sends his love. Well, you're quite the social butterfly. Frohickey, Roush, Scully. Do you know Skinner? Yeah, he set me on the case. I should have known. Yes. Agent Wilmore, it's Dana Scully. Where are you? Uh, Juneau, Alaska. Have you found Mulder? Yeah, he's right here. Thank God. Can I talk to him? It's Scully. Scully, where are you? I'm on my way to Juneau. Well, who's your travel agent? Byers, Frohickey, and Langley. God love them. Do you have your cell phone with you? Yes. All right, I'll call you back. All right, then, let's get going. Great, it looks like we got some uninvited guests. NSA? Or Jehovah's Witnesses. I need you to keep them busy for me long enough to meet Scully back at that facility, then you get away and meet us there. Uh, hold on. I was assigned to find you and Scully. I've done that. I'm out of here. What kind of attitude is that? The game's not over yet. Don't you want to wait around for the payoff? Okay.
Agent Wilmore, we're with the National Security Agency. We've been tracking a plutonium smuggling ring from the former Soviet Union and Yugoslavia through Hong Kong and into Seattle. And we have hard evidence that the Terrakem was a courier ship which carried goods from outside the Seven Mile Zone. Plutonium killed the crew as well as the man who died in Charno. The investigation here is over, Agent Wilmore. You will immediately board a plane for Seattle. We will assume your duties here. We will take you to the airport now. Agent Wilmore, we're with the National Security... <laughs> Agent Wilmore, we're with the National Security Agency. We've been tracking a plutonium smuggling ring from the former Soviet Union and Yugoslavia through Hong Kong and into Seattle. And we have hard evidence that the Terrakem was a courier ship which carried goods from outside the Seven Mile Zone. Plutonium killed the crew as well as the man who died in Charno. The investigation here is over, Agent Wilmore. You will immediately board a plane for Seattle. We will assume your duties here. We will take you to the airport now. These burns match the others. Mulder's gone on ahead. I don't, I don't think we have much time. your help, Scully. I need two of these keys to get past the blast door and into the storage chamber. I need for you to help me. Run.
That explains the cattle mutilation. Agent Wilmore, fancy meeting you here. So it's you? Yes, it's me. I guess you're curious about what the hell's going on here. Well, yeah, the thought had crossed my mind. Oh? It was my job to divert attention away from the actual events. Plutonium smuggling, Russians, Wong, all made up. Actually, I made everything up. Why? Money. Lots of it. It had nothing to do with any deeply held beliefs. It feels so good talking to you, but... What's wrong with Mulder? I think he's in some kind of a narco-somnambulistic state. Maybe if we can lure him into the isolation chamber, I, I can contain him until I can figure out how to treat him. Okay. How are we gonna do that? Well, first of all, we need to locate the other key that Mulder was looking for. Now, whatever is in that room is protected by some kind of a blast door. It looks to me like, like the, uh, the door is, is operated by two key panels. Both keys need to be turned simultaneously, like launching a nuclear missile. Now, there's a key guard in the corner of the room. Maybe if, if I distract him, you can come up behind him and knock him out. Then we can use the key to get Mulder into that chamber. But first, we have to get the isolation chamber powered up. Now, the, the door to the security area locked itself behind me, so we have to get that opened up first. Let's hope this works. Any particular direction you'd like to claim? Halt. Sir, I'm Agent Dana Scully with the FBI. Do not come any further. This facility has been overrun by terrorists. I need your assistance. I can't leave my post. Sir, I am an FBI agent. I am asking you have three for your seconds assistance. Before I shoot. I need
Turn the key. Turn the key. Major Wilmore, I know you're upset by what's transpired, but we're all affected when one of our own goes bad. I never saw it coming. Mark was my friend. I should have been more attentive, perhaps, but none of us are at fault. Except Agent Cook himself. Hello. Come in, please. I just wanted to say goodbye. I spoke to Detective Astridorian. Apparently, they searched Cook's apartment and found my laptop, fortunately. But uh, it seems as though Cook staged the break-in here in order to make it look as if he'd been attacked. Well, it seems that Agents Mulder and Scully have been uh, talking to Assistant Director Skinner. Yes, apparently your work has received quite a bit of attention at the Bureau. You have quite a fan in an assistant director, Skinner. Although I must admit, some of what I've heard sounds a bit fantastic, to put it mildly. Well, yes, sir. I agree. I'd have to plead the fifth on that. Anyway, I've got a plane to catch, but Agent Mulder wanted me to tell you that his foot has woken up. That's a relief. Anyway, I wanted to say thank you. I wouldn't have missed it for the world. You're looking a little ragged around the edges. Why don't you go home and get some sleep? I'll see you here tomorrow, first thing in the morning. And oh, I expect your report on this matter to show up when you do. Yes, sir. Oh, Detective Astadorian also mentioned she had some paperwork for you to sign. She said she'd drop it by your place, although I told her she could send it here. She seemed uh, adamant about handing it off to you directly. Yes, sir. Agent Wilmore. I guess I know what you want. Hold on a second, I'll go get it. I think not. You'd better keep it. You're gonna need it again. Soon.
Halt! Sir, I'm Agent Dana Scully with the FBI. Do not come any further. This facility has been overrun by terrorists. I need your assistance. I can't leave my post. Sir, I am an FBI agent. I am asking you have three for your seconds assistance. Before I shoot. I One, need your help, sir. Two, I need for you to come three. with me. <laughs> I'm sorry about this. This comes from the very top. There's nothing I can do about it. I'm sorry about this. This comes from the very top. There's nothing I can do about it. Sorry about this. This comes from the very top. There's nothing. Agent Wilmore, fancy meeting you here. What's wrong with Mulder? I think he's in some kind of a narco-somnambulistic state. Maybe if we can lure him into the isolation chamber, I, I can contain him until I can figure out how to treat him. Okay. How are we gonna do that? Well, first of all, we need to locate the other key that Mulder was looking for. Now, whatever is in that room is protected by some kind of a blast door. It looks to me like, like the, uh, the door is, is operated by two key panels. Both keys need to be turned simultaneously, like launching a nuclear missile. Now, there's a key guard in the corner of the room. Maybe if, if I distract him, you can come up behind him and knock him out. Then we can use the key to get Mulder into that chamber. But first, we have to get the isolation chamber powered up. Now, the, the door to the security area locked itself behind me, so we have to get that opened up first. Let's hope this works. Any particular direction you'd like to claim? 